So now today we are going to cover the topic drug induced ginger element. It has already been started. Okay, last month the last uh, lecture was taken on ginger enlargement. So now we are going to study drug induced ginger enlargement in detail. Now there are two ways how the enlargement occurs. It is just because of the growth of the cells or growth in size of the cells. If because the number of cells increase, it is called as gingival hyperplasia. And because of the increase in size of the cells, if it occurs, that is called as gingival hypertrophy. Okay. So the gingival enlargement can take place because of both the processes, not a single process. It can be combined also. That few cells will grow in size also as the number of cells will also be more. Okay. Now you can see this this diagram. See this is this growth everywhere. Okay, hyperplasia and hypertrophy. It can be both. It can be combined, and this can be seen only on a microscope. Clinically seeing, we can't see it because of the increase in number of cells or because of increase in size of cells. But increase in size of cells has a limitation. A cell can't grow beyond certain size. But increase in number of cells will not have a limitation. It will grow, grow, and reproduce itself. Now the classification has already been taken to you. Okay, according to etiology, there are different and the, the, there are different things because of some deficiencies like vitamin C in pregnancy because of the hormonal changes. The most important thing people make mistake is in the false enlargement. False enlargement is not because of the gingival tissue; it is because of the underlying heart tissue. For example, if you are finding that in the in the tuberosity area. There is growth of the tuberosity area. You have to palpate with your hands and see how much is the soft tissue or hard tissue. Sometimes what happens, the underlying bone, like the mandibular tori, mandibular tori will have a covering of gingiva, and we what do we feel? It is gingival enlargement. But actually, that is because of the hard tissue. That is the tori under the gingiva. Now, drug-induced gingival growth occurs as a side effect of some systemic medication. Like what happens? We are giving drug for a particular disease. Like we are giving drug for diabetes. We are giving drug for hypertension. We are giving drug for any other as a painkiller. We are giving some antibiotics. So this drug will act in a different way in a particular human being, and that will lead to gingival enlargement. So the, in the past history, three three types of drugs have been seen to Create gingival overgrowth. The one is anti-anti-conversion drug, like phenytoin, farvitone. This will create growth of the gingival tissue. The other is calcium channel blocker, such as nifedipine, that is used in case of hypertension. And third is immunosuppressant drug, like cyclosporine. Cyclosporine is used in case where there is the organs has been Donated or means after organ transplant. So to prevent the organ from being rejected, we give an immunosuppressant drug like cyclosporine. Okay. So now, how much? These are the things that really matter. That what is the dose of the drug given, for how long it is given, and what is the concentration of the drug in the saliva as well as serum. After passing to the bile transplant liver, what is the concentration left in the serum? So these factors in the drug will matter. Okay, the other things like age, age is not a major factor because few diseases occurs in a very older age. Okay, like hypertension, everything. That time the drugs are given, but few things like epilepsy can occur at any age. Okay, but there is a genetic predisposition, like few. HLA antigen, genetic markers, they are present in few people and they are not present in few people. So accordingly, not all the patient taking the drug will have the disease. The the percentage, like if 100 patients are taking nifedipine, 20 people will have the disease. Okay, and these are the additive factors like oral hygiene. The poorer the hygiene, okay, 
The poorer the hygiene, there is more growth. Sometimes there are two factors. One is the inflammation of the tissue and other is because of the drug. So both combined will give to more gingival overgrowth. Okay. There are some hormones in a female, female patient. This can be one of the reasons for the growth in the gingival tissue. Then can be chronic irritation because of some it can be because of some uh, like a bridge that is causing continuous irritation. That can be one of the cause for the growth. Okay. Now the diagnosis of drug drainage is mainly based on its clinical appearance, medical history and histopathology features. But every time we can't take a histopathology when we're doing a clinical work. So the clinical appearance is very, very different from the inflammatory enlargement. That I'll show you to some photos. Medical history is that if you take a medical history, now at least 40% of the people are having hypertension after the age of 40 years. Then after taking the history, we should check out, are they taking calcium channel blockers? Since how long they are taking? How is the oral hygiene of the patient? All this has to be checked when you are taking a... So what are the symptoms? The first symptom of the patient is that it is not aesthetically pleasing to the patient. The second thing is the discomfort. And because of the growth of the tissue, there is interference speech and chewing. And because of food lodgement and because of it not patient not able to maintain properly, what happens? The patient, if you are not able to maintain properly, there will be accumulation of food particles and that will lead to halitosis. So if you can see this diagram, you can see the normal life, normal gingiva, this is knife edged. So whatever you are going to eat, it's just going to spill over this. Okay, or just going to be easily, when the patient chews food here, it is going to just go above the gingiva. So there's no accumulation of anything over this tissue. But as enlargement occurs, in case of periodontitis and inflammatory enlargement, though the enlargement not much, still you can see there's more plaque accumulation here. Now in this case, if you can see, there's so much of growth of tissue that there everywhere there is food accumulation. The cleaning, maintaining of the tissue becomes very, very difficult. It is not a self-cleansable tissue. This is a self-cleansable tissue. Whatever we are eating, the first bolus will clean the, will be cleaned by the second bolus. But in this case, if you see, there will be more accumulation. That's why there is more halitosis. Now, this is very important. There is painless bead-like enlargement of the interdental papilla. Bead-like enlargement. Extend to the marginal gingiva. Massive tissue fold covering the tooth. So because of the growth, it will cover the tooth and it will look like a bead. Bead means money. money. So it is gold, round. Mulberry shape, firm, pale pink, resilient, low blood surface, no tendency to bleed. This is a very, very important feature of drug induced enlargement. There is less amount of bleeding as compared to the inflammatory enlargement. But in few cases, there is mixed reaction. There is inflammation as well as drug. In that cases, there is tendency to bleed. Onset occurs within three months. And most commonly, the anterior region is involved. And later on, it may go posteriorly. You can see this diagram of phenotype. Now, in this 50% of the people who are taking phenotype will have such type of growth. More common in anger patient. I told you, epilepsy is seen at a very younger age. And I've seen the patient from 5 years, 20, 10, like 20 years. A lot of patients will be taking phenotype. So there is a particular thing how this occurs. It is like there are particular type of fibroblasts in that patient, 50% of the patient, that will lead to more development of collagen fibers. Moreover, there is less destruction of the collagen tissue. So because of more production of the collagen, as a less destruction of the tissue, there will be more amount of current tissue in the gingiva. And that will lead to the growth of the tissue. Now you can see cyclosporin. Cyclosporin occurs in 25 to 70 percent of the patient taking cyclosporin can show enlargement. Cyclosporin solution experience earlier on of ginger ginger then using a capsule. Okay, if the patient is using solution, there will be more enlargement as compared to patient in capsule. 
as i told you immunosuppressants are given to prevent organ transplant rejection reversibility inhibit helper t cell okay more vascular connective tissue than compared to phenotype induced enlargement now this is a comparison two type of enlargement the vascularity in this is more as compared to that in phenotype means i mean to say the phenotype will be more fibrous to look at side effect of an, uh, this enlargement are nephrotoxicity hypertension and hypertrichosis nephrotoxicity means toxicity of the kidneys the kidneys may have a problem there is more hypertension so cyclosporine plus hydrocyclosporine will stimulate fibroblast proliferation i told you there are two ways one is to increase the development of fibroblast and other is decrease the degradation of the fibroblast okay and this phenomenon will help in increasing stimulation of fibroblast and that will lead to gingival enlargement the calcium channel blocker now people there is the hypertension is so common nowadays initially the most common drug was used nifedipine out of 100 patients that you see during our college 80 people were having nifedipine nifedipine drug as a control for hypertension but later on it came to know that 20% of the people using nifedipine had gingival enlargement now the calcium channel blocker increase the gingival fibroblast increase the, the all the phenomena are generally same okay now there are some antibiotics if taken in a long term like erythromycin hormones have been also shown to show gingival enlargement but there are, there are very very less studies so this is a table okay in the systemic drugs that cause phenytoin cyclosporine nifedipine these are most common drugs now as the studies are going on the next generation of nifedipine is amlodipine but as in this 20% patients are affected in that 5% patients are affected okay so in that only 5% patients are affected so pathogenesis it stimulates the proliferation of fibroblast like cells and epithelium and in this in this the cells are stimulated for in this there is abundant extracellular matrix like the matrix between the two cells that increases because they have shown that in that there is increase in the number of dilatation of the cells as well there is more inflammatory factors so in this 50% are affected in 25% these are most important things you should visualize so we should always not say that patient taking ifidipine will have enlargement patient taking cyclosporine will not have enlargement 50% will have in ifidipine or 20% will have and now as ifidipine is not used in as before amlodipine is used it is again come down to 5 to 10% the most important in the control of is drug induced plaque control okay as i told you because the patient is not able to maintain oral hygiene there is more plaque accumulation that will lead to inflammatory enlargement so in addition to the drug induced enlargement the plaque induced the inflammatory and there is enlargement will be more so most important thing is to control plaque the second is medical management like we need to change the drug okay if the same drug is continued it is going to enlarge so we change a drug we take the physician's opinion for it we don't need to change the ourselves we have to see that the new drug suits like if you are ch changing calcium channel or nifedipine go to the other group anti diuretic or some other group that should be able to control the hypertension cyclosporine the other drug can be used is tracolimus the amount of patient showing enlargement is tracolimus is very very less okay now for plaque control if there is mild gingival enlargement and if there is more of inflammatory factor scaling and polishing will solve the problem you don't need to change the drug but this maintenance you have to tell the patient to maintain the oral hygiene you have to tell the patient to maintain the oral hygiene because if the patient maintains the oral hygiene then only the level less amount of enlargement okay mouth washes class like chlorhexidine can be given now generally these drugs immunosuppressant drugs everything uh, the uh, 
phenytoin is given epileptic patient we don't maintain that much of oral hygiene so you can add mouthwashes to this kind of patients toothbrushing is very very important altering the medication with the consultation of the physician now if you do a first like i as a first phase of therapy that we are removing all the plaque calculus whatever is in the oral cavity because of that we are able to reduce the inflammatory factors okay then inflammatory enlargement so the component of inflammatory enlargement is also important like for example if there is 100% enlargement 25% is inflammatory and 75% is fibrous. So because of removing of the plaque and calculus, we are able to decrease 25% of the enlargement. For the rest 75%, we have to take other measures like change of drug or surgery. Now after giving a drug, it may take 6 to 12 months for resolution of the gingival enlargement. Alternate drug for calcium channel walker, diltiazem or verapamil. Alternate drug for cyclosporin tracheolimus. Alternate drug for phenytoin is valproic acid, carbamazepine. You get it? So these drugs have been changed. Okay? This is only in cases where we see gingival enlargement as a side effect of these the old drugs. Patient taking anti patient taking cyclosporin, the azithromycin decreases the severity of gingival overgrowth. Organ transplant patient, dosage of both prednisolone and Azithoprine. This may decrease the growth of the tissue. Now, surgical treatment. Now, see, in all the cases, we come to know that because the inflammatory factor is reduced, now how much growth is there? So if the growth is minimal, by change in drug, it may get solved. But if the enlargement is not, okay, it is not going to go just by changing the drug or maintaining product. We need to go surgically. What happens because of the growth of the tissue? The patient is not able to maintain oral hygiene. Whatever he may try. So what happens? We have to make a proper control to the patient so that maintenance becomes easy. If we do a surgery without changing the drug, the chances that regrowth are more. So always try to change the drug before doing a surgery. If you plan out. And check to it that the newer drug that is given to the patient will help to man manage the like epilepsy, he should not have that. Uh, he should not get the attacks in cyclosporin. He should be able to maintain the uh, avoid the rejection of the organ. In case of calcium channel walker, they should be able to maintain the blood pressure. Got it? So the change of drug is also one, but that has to be done by the physician. After checking out after three to six months, then we can go for surgery. Minimum three months we have to wait for whatever changes to occur in the tissue or change in drug as well as to see that the patient is comfortable using new drug and without any problem. So if there is very minor enlargement, you can do gingivoplasty. Just control the tissue so that whatever the patient eats just slips off from the tissue and maintains the oral hygiene is good. Uh, only a short area is involved to gingivoplasty. A short area is involved, then a ginger plaster. A periodontal flap is involved, means if entire mouth is involved, the enlargement is very, very large, then you go for a flap. Ginger tummy treatment preferred when the growth is just in the anterior six teeth. Okay, there is no evidence of attachment loss, there is no bone loss. Okay, then we can do ginger tummy. But the amount of keratinite tissue, see gingectomy main thing is what attached gingiva should be minimum 3 millimeters. Okay, so that should be at a 3 millimeter keratinite tissue should remain after surgery. So now, if the patient comes to taking drug known to cause gingival enlargement, then you first check the oral cavity. If there is not present, gingival enlargement not present, explain to the patient that why maintenance of oral hygiene is very very important for if you see enlargement, reinforce oral or hygiene, give progesterone glucan rinses, changing group training, and if necessary, give drug substitution. Then call for re after two months or three months. 
If ginger ale regresses, ask the patient to maintain oral hygiene appropriate frequency. But if there is enlargement, then divide. There are two things. Small area is involved. There is no attachment loss and no bone loss. There is adequate amount of added tissue. Then just do ginger. But in the large area of enlargement, there is clinical enlargement loss. Okay, there is limited amount of added tissue. If you remove that with ginger tummy, we will lose the attached gingiva. At that time, we have to do peritoneal flap surgery. So just imagine if the patient comes here to you for check. If there is no enlargement, just reinforce maintain the oral hygiene. If the patient is here and if there is minimal enlargement, ask him to first. You have to create the habit to maintain oral hygiene. Just changing the drug, doing surgery is not important. The patient should be able to maintain the oral hygiene. So that's why we do after phase one therapy. We always wait for one month just to make the paper. Ask the patient to brush so that it creates a habit of brushing. Okay. So what happens after doing ginger alignment? Then you re again you recheck. If it changes, then it's okay maintain. But again, if the alignment persists, now there are two things depending on our how much area of alignment is there. If small area is there anterior teeth, there is no bone loss, then you can do ginger. But if large area is there, then you do peritoneal flexion. But after that also, the maintenance is a very important thing in case of a patient. So I hope I everybody got it. Put it in the chat box if you have understood everything. Not able to see. Hey, good day. Chat box. Is it there? Good day. Any question? Which are the same? Chat box. Huh? Bula, the question which are the same? Okay. Asa, I can ask more. My God. Then let the mute clear. What? Huh? Huh? Okay. Then that is the mute clear. Laser surgery has been proposed as a surgical treatment for gingival overgrowth. Okay, we can use lasers. In case of gingivectomy, we can use lasers if there is a small area. Okay, there is a decrease in surgical time as well. Post-operative healing is painless. Now, good oral hygiene for preventing and retarding the recurrence of gingival enlargement is important after oral surgery. See, I am telling you. Just doing surgery, changing drug is not very important. This, we as a dentist, we forget telling this to the patient that maintaining the oral hygiene is very, very important. So these are the risk factors: poor oral hygiene, peritoneal disease, peritoneal pocket, gingival inflammation, degree of dental block, duration, dose of cyclosporine. So these are the important things. Like if there is disease, already there is disease, and if you are giving a drug, that will lead to more ill. So always, whenever giving these drugs, also we should check the oral hygiene of the patient. So I think it can be mandatory, as the physician don't know, but always do a dental treatment before starting this amount of drug and ask the patient to brush so that amount of enlargement cases because of drug will be less. Now, if you continue the drug without, if you continue the drug even after treatment. There are chances of growth are more, but the more you control the plaque, okay, the better the results. Good oral hygiene may help to prevent the onset development of gingival enlargement. So we have to be more concerned on the good oral hygiene. 